Deadly Moments in History, Ancient Serial Killers. This morning, a city on edge. Authorities now saying they believe a serial killer could be on the loose. According to police, seven people have been murdered. It's been a terrifying few months for... This is a familiar headline to many of us. Serial killings are often the subject of news reports, movies, and TV shows. Their regular appearance in our modern times raises the question, were there serial killers in the past? The answer is undoubtedly yes. However, people's idea of a historical killer usually extends only as far back as Jack the Ripper in the late 1800s. In this video, we will be exploring the ancient serial killers who walked the streets of Rome, Han China, and medieval Germany, among many others. Reports of Ancient Serial Killers Serial killings are a subset of murders, where the crime repeats over time with cooling off periods in between. The term is modern, having been coined in the mid-20th century. When we look to the past, we must therefore rely on an interpretation of surviving records. This inherently causes problems, since there is a bias in what gets written down. Broadly speaking, before the rise of media, the focus of such records are on the upper class. Therefore, many ancient serial killings actually involve nobles, either as the perpetrator or the victim. When the serial killing occurred amongst the lower classes, it would take particularly horrendous acts to break the silence. Or, alternatively, the stories would become the stuff of folklore, such as werewolves, witches, or vampires. Upper Class Serial Killers We will begin by taking a look at a case where the elites were the victims. Something foul was afoot in ancient Rome of the 4th century BC. A series of odd deaths cut through the aristocracy, leaving several prominent men suddenly and mysteriously dead. Writing some 300 years later, Livy records that the incident was, quote, thought to be an act of madness rather than deliberate wickedness, but provides us with little supporting concepts other than to suggest that a ring of women had been poisoning the rich. This story is a good example of how murky the past can be. Even our ancestors didn't know what to make of the event, and seemingly the only reason this tale was recorded is because it affected the powerful. Had a similar incident occurred among the lower classes, we likely would never have been aware of it. This will be a recurring theme when it comes to ancient reports. The other, more detailed accounts of serial killing among the upper classes occur when they were the perpetrators. One of the earliest records of a serial killer dates back to 2nd century BC China. Liu Pengli was the Han Prince of Zhidong, grandson of the Emperor Wen, who became notorious for leading marauding expeditions into the countryside for sport. With the help of slaves or criminals, he would rampage indiscriminately, reaching a personal death toll of 100. Citizens feared going out at night, and when the whole kingdom soon came to know of his ways, news spread to the Han court. Han officials pleaded the emperor to have him executed, but the old man refused to kill his own relative choosing instead to banish Liu and make him a commoner. Here we see how the upper classes were able to abuse their power over their victims to commit their crimes, a common theme in modern times when serial killers target vulnerable individuals. This case also demonstrates how the powerful killers could remain active for long periods before ever being brought to account, only to receive relatively light punishment. The stories of several other high-profile killers follow a similar pattern. In 15th century France, for instance, the killing spree of Guy de Ré only came to an end when he kidnapped another member of the elite, a cleric from the church of Saint-Étienne. In the following investigation, bodies were found on his estates and accomplices revealed that this former commander of Joan of Arc's French army had taken sick pleasure in gutting possibly hundreds of young peasants. He would receive the comparatively light sentence of death by hanging, rather than torture. Not all of these infamous deeds were perpetrated by powerful men. In the 16th century, another noble, Countess Bathory of Hungary, would extract decades of twisted pleasure from torture sessions. Her victims were young women, initially drawn from her own staff, followed by peasant girls from the countryside, and finally, noble daughters of the local aristocracy. It was only this last group which crossed the line and brought her to trial. Historical records claim she killed between 300 to 600 individuals. For these crimes, her accomplices were executed, while she was merely imprisoned within her castle. 
once again, it is clear that the elite played by their own rules. Lower Class Serial Killers Amongst the lower classes, cases of serial killings rarely appear in history books and largely go unreported. Instead, these brutal murders find their way into folklore, often becoming tied to supernatural forces and spawning mass hysteria. For instance, a French hermit caught attacking young children became known as the werewolf of Dole and was burned at the stake. In the wake of suspicious deaths, many others would be accused of being witches or vampires. The rise of print in the late medieval period, however, expanded the scope of our historical record and shed light on these deadly activities. In this age of print, the most common reports of serial killings amongst the lower classes seem to have involved bandits. 16th century Germany was a hotbed for such activity. The most prolific of these individuals was Peter Niers, the leader of around 30 robber murderers who confessed to killing 544 people. He was a master of disguise, which many attributed to his supernatural dealings with the devil. This idea came out of stories that he had killed 24 women and used their unborn children for black magic. For his crimes, he was broken on the wheel and quartered while still alive, punishment we rarely see administered to his upper class peers. Nears is the perfect window into the world of lower class killers. We're able to confirm bits of his story from official warrants which circulated at the time, but the bulk of his crimes are recounted in folk ballads. His story may even have inspired other bandit tales which quickly entered folklore. The most prominent of these semi-historical figures is Chrisman Ganepertenga, a cave-dwelling killer said to have murdered 964 people. As with his historical counterpart, the killer's execution was said to be a public, multi-day affair. Rewind the clock back before the printing press and both Niers and Ganepertenga become nothing more than tall tales. We should note that incidents of deadly banditry are reported across the world. In India, Thug Bera led a cult of men who attacked and robbed travelers in the early 1800s. They were responsible for up to 930 deaths, which often involved ritual strangulations. Bera is quoted as saying that he personally strangled 125 of the victims. These types of cases form the bulk of our reports of ancient serial killers among the lower classes. Serial killing by another name. We have many other recorded instances of repeat murders which blur the lines of serial killing. These killings are generally tied to conspiracies or are in some way legitimized by an authority. For instance, the Witch of Kilkenny's murder of her four husbands was perhaps a ploy to secure her own financial position, while Lacusta of Gaul's poisonings were often commissioned by wealthy individuals, including Emperor Nero. Progressing down this path, we might even begin to look suspiciously at the murderous tendencies of bloody leaders such as Caligula, Vlad the Impaler, or Genghis Khan. To do so, however, would be to cast too wide a net in our definition of serial killing. The past was far more violent than it is today, and perhaps the idea of a serial killer loses its meaning in a world so habituated to death. In fact, some argue that serial killers are quite a modern phenomenon, that they are a product of our densely populated cities and fluid modes of transportation which facilitate the relatively easy murder of isolated individuals anonymously, which, in the context of our sheltered lives, seem all the more jarring. If you found this topic interesting, check out these other related videos and playlists about our fascinating past.